Hypersensitivity pneumonitis is a lung disease that is caused by exposure to a variety of different substances. We're going to talk about what those substances are in this lesson. We're also going to talk about the signs and symptoms of hypersensitivity pneumonitis, and we're also going to talk about ways to diagnose it and ways to treat it. So hypersensitivity pneumonitis is also known as extrinsic allergic alveolitis. It is actually a type of interstitial lung disease, or ILD. And you can think of it as a hypersensitivity lung disease. So it is a hypersensitization to particular exposures. So this condition is caused by an immunological response after exposure to a variety of different substances or triggers like a variety of different antigens. We're going to talk about what those substances or antigens are later on in this lesson. This condition is often associated with occupations or hobbies. So certain occupations are more likely to get hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Certain hobbies are more likely to predispose individuals to this condition as well. So we're going to talk about some of these occupations and hobbies in the next slide. So what are some of the causes and exposures? There are actually many, many different causative antigens that lead to hypersensitivity pneumonitis. There's actually more than 300. We're going to talk about some of the major ones here. One of those is moldy hay. This leads to a condition known as farmer's lung. So farmer's lung is a hypersensitivity pneumonitis, but we call it farmer's lung when it's caused by exposure to a substance in moldy hay. Another cause or exposure is compost. This leads to something called mushroom worker's lung. And there can also be exposures to moldy sugarcane or moldy molasses. This can lead to a condition known as bagasosis. So all three of these in common have to do with exposure to particular thermophilic actinomycete spores. And one of the species is actually known as Saccharopolyspora rectivergula. So with regards to exposure to moldy hay or compost or moldy sugarcane or moldy molasses, it's not actually these things, it's actually these spores that lead to these types of conditions. And we name these conditions based on the exposure. So moldy hay leads to farmer's lung, compost leads to what we call mushroom worker's lung, moldy sugarcane or moldy molasses leads to a condition known as bagasosis. Another exposure is humidifiers or air conditioners. This can lead to what we call humidifier lung or air conditioner lung. There's also exposures to saunas or hot tubs. This can lead to hot tub lung. You might have heard of this condition. Both of these are really due to exposure to mycobacterium avium complex or MAC. And another exposure is bird droppings. And this can lead to bird breeders or bird fanciers lung. So individuals who take care of birds, particularly pigeons, can have a type of hypersensitivity pneumonitis we call bird fancier's lung. So it's actually caused by antigens in bird excrement, specifically from pigeons again. So all of these conditions here are actually hypersensitivity pneumonitis, but we call them different names depending on the exposure and depending on the cause. What is the pathophysiology of hypersensitivity pneumonitis? As I mentioned before, it is due to an immunological response. It is actually a non-IgM mediated inflammation of the lung parenchyma or the lung tissue. And IgE is actually immunoglobulin E. It's a type of antibody. So hypersensitivity pneumonitis is actually caused by IgA and IgG mediated responses that occur after being exposed to an inhaled antigen that we talked about in the last slide. And what happens is both the alveoli and bronchioles are affected in this condition. So alveoli are the microscopic air sacs that participate in gas exchange. And bronchioles are the smaller bronchi that lead to the alveoli. So hypersensitivity pneumonitis is actually due to a type 3 and type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Type 3 often occurs first and then as the condition progresses, type 4 occurs in more chronic presentations. Eventually, it all leads to scarring of the lung or lung fibrosis if not dealt with appropriately. What are some of the signs and symptoms of hypersensitivity pneumonitis? We actually break down the condition of hypersensitivity pneumonitis into a few stages. 
The first is the acute phase or the acute stage. It usually occurs within four to six hours after the exposure to a particular antigen. Usually has an abrupt onset with flu-like symptoms. So it looks like the individual has some kind of a respiratory tract infection. They have cough, they have dyspnea or shortness of breath, they have fever and chills, so they don't feel very well. They also have malaise, so they're very tired. And the flu-like symptoms often last for 18 to 24 hours. They can also have chest tightness and may have some associated nausea. Prolonged exposure leads to subacute and chronic form. So those are the next two phases of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. So the next phase is subacute. This is often more insidious and gradual. They have a productive cough and dyspnea. So productive cough means they're coughing up some phlegm. Dyspnea, again, means shortness of breath. They also have constitutional symptoms. So they have fatigue. They are feeling unwell. They have anorexia and weight loss. And then if this is not dealt with appropriately, if they continue to have exposure to the particular trigger or antigen, whether that be a hot tub, bird droppings, or moldy hay, it can lead to a chronic stage of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. This is where we start to see fibrotic changes. So the lung begins to become scarred. This phase also has dyspnea, so shortness of breath, cough, malaise, so they're very tired, anorexia, and weight loss as well. They can also have finger clubbing. So finger clubbing is often associated with respiratory conditions, but it can be associated with other conditions. But this shows the chronicity of this condition. So if this condition lasts for a long time, they can have interstitial lung disease, as we mentioned before, lung fibrosis and finger clubbing. So finger clubbing as noted here. And if they were to do pulmonary function tests or PFTs, it would show a progressively restrictive pattern. And a chest x-ray that is done on these individuals can show predominantly upper lobe reticulonodular pattern. So before this in the acute and subacute stages, chest x-rays might show something, but oftentimes they are normal. So they look like they have a flu-like illness, but the chest x-ray looks normal, so it doesn't look like pneumonia. But as this condition gets worse and it becomes more chronic, they start to have that reticulonodular pattern in their upper lobes. How do we make the diagnosis of hypersensitivity pneumonitis? So the diagnosis of hypersensitivity pneumonitis is actually complicated. It takes a combination of clinical, so history and physical, imaging, and laboratory investigations. So oftentimes a CT scan is performed and what is shown is that there is upper and middle lobe ground glass opacity. So if we look here, here's some ground glass opacity here. Laboratory investigations, when we do look at ESR or erythrocyte sedimentation rate or CRP or C-reactive protein, these are elevated. The immunoglobulin G or IgG is positive for a specific antigen. So you could perform this test looking for IgG against specific antigens that we talked about before, whether that be mycobacterium avium or some kind of thermophilic actinomycete spore. This doesn't necessarily tell you that that specific antigen is causing hypersensitivity pneumonitis. It just means that they've been exposed to it. So the IgG positive might give you some extra evidence for your suspected diagnosis, but doesn't actually confirm the diagnosis because they could be exposed to a particular antigen and have antibodies against that antigen, but that antigen isn't causing them to have this condition. It's not the trigger or the specific antigen causing this condition. Once we make the diagnosis, how do we treat it? So treatment has to do with identifying the triggers and avoiding the triggers or the exposures. So if they are a farmer and they are dealing with moldy hay, try to avoid that exposure. If they are using a hot tub, try to avoid that exposure. It's all about identifying and avoiding that trigger or exposure. If they do that, symptoms can actually improve within hours to days. When we look at the imaging though, if they've had some imaging abnormalities, those chest imaging abnormalities may take weeks to improve. You can start them on systemic corticosteroids to help with that inflammatory response. This improves their symptoms and it may actually decrease the length of illness. 
but it appears to be most effective in the more acute presentations. But if they have left it, if they've been exposed to a particular antigen for a long period of time and they go into the subacute and chronic stages of hypersensitivity pneumonitis, the systemic corticosteroids might not be as effective. You can also use some other adjunct treatments as well. These include azathioprine, mycophenolate mofetil, and rituximab. So again, diagnosis is complicated. It requires a combination of clinical imaging and laboratory investigations. CT scan will show you ground glass opacity. Laboratory investigations will show you elevated ESR and CRP. You may find an immunoglobulin G against a specific antigen that is known to cause hypersensitivity pneumonitis, but that doesn't necessarily mean that is the specific antigen causing the hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Once you make the diagnosis, you move on to trying to identify and avoid the triggers. So a good history of exposures is critical here. Once you do identify, try to avoid those triggers. You can use systemic corticosteroids, but again, these seem to be most effective in the acute presentations. And some adjunct treatments include azathioprine, mycophenolate mofetil, and rituximab. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.